In this lesson, we're going to learn about subVIs. SubVIs are similar to subroutines from other programming languages in that they let us encapsulate code. SubVIs are similar to other VIs that we have created, but subVIs are executed from within another VI. We will create a subVI which calculates the hypotenuse from the Pythagorean theorem. It will have two inputs, A, the adjacent, and B, the opposite. We'll also have one output, C, the hypotenuse. On our block diagram, open the numeric subpalette and place two square functions. Connect terminals A and B to the square functions. We will then add them together and square root the result. Let's save our VI and then test it. If we enter in values for A and B, we see that C gives us the correct calculated value. The next thing that we need to do in order to use this as a sub-VI is determine the inputs and outputs so that another VI can call it. We do this via the icon seen in the top right hand corner. By right clicking on the icon, we can see a few options appear. The ones important to use currently are Edit Icon and Show Connector. Let's edit the icon first. This will bring up the icon editor, similar to what you may have seen in any paint program. We'll make a simple icon with a blue background and put some text on it. We will call it P Theorem. Now, if we click OK, we can see the image in the top right hand corner of our VI has changed. The reason to edit the icon is so that anyone using your VI can get a brief idea of what it does just by looking at the icon. Now we are ready to connect the inputs and outputs. Right click on the icon again and select Show Connector. Notice that we have a representation of the connections available to our VI. It is not always the case, but generally we wire our input terminals on the left and our output terminals on the right. We can now map our connection terminals to the front panel. This is done by clicking a region and then clicking the control you wish to map. Notice that the box on the icon changes color according to the type of control or indicator selected. We can also change the pattern of the icon by right clicking it and selecting patterns. Make sure though that the number of boxes is at least as many as your VI inputs or outputs. Now save this VI. We are now ready to use our sub VI. If we open up a new VI, we can right click on the block diagram and click Select VI. We can now navigate to our new sub VI and, like any other function, place it on the block diagram. Create controls and indicators for the sub VI. And run it. Finally, another way to create a sub VI from within another VI is by selecting the code we wish to contain and then from the toolbar selecting Edit Create Sub VI. Notice how the terminals are automatically mapped, but the icon is still the default. In this lesson, we learned two methods of creating sub VIs. We also learned how to map their connectors and make a descriptive icon.